The main event of Ric Flair versus Tatsumi Fujinami. Mm. This is the first bit, actually, suddenly you see Tatsumi Fujinami's dressing room where you go, oh, yeah, forgotten that was the, the big match. I thought that was the thing, yeah. They don't yeah. mention it in the entire <laughs> show. They mention it at the start and then no. it's just never mentioned again. It's all obfuscation up until this point. I love the global feel of this and I, mm. I felt it at the time. Even though at the time I didn't really know who Tatsumi Fujinami was, mm. I knew if he was there, he had to be a big Japanese star. Yeah. And there's a sense of it being a world title. They always call it a world title. It's great to see them working with someone from the other side of the world. I felt that that made it a very big thing. Yeah. It also made it an unpredictable thing. Um, you, you get a little chat with Hiro Matsuda as uh, Tatsumi Fujinami comes out of his dressing room as well. Um, he is a wrestler and a trainer. Mm. Uh, the two people he trained, not the sort of people you'd imagine that a man like that trained. He trained Hulk Hogan and Lex Luger. Oh, uh, two real That's Americans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is their trainer, Hiro Matsuda. Uh, Fujinami comes out, he gets this very traditional Edo era mm. Japanese music with a bit of fuzzy guitar to kind of go. <laughs> it's not, it's not, this ain't your daddy's Japanese wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> this is very much now. There's a load of guys who are holding a sign in kanji. Mm. And they look like traditional hayseed truckers. And they have a sign in kanji and they are chanting, Fujinami, Fujinami. And Dusty Rhodes looks at the sign and he says, I don't think that says welcome to America. <laughs> like that. <laughs> now, Dusty, it fucking does, right? <laughs> I know what they look like. Don't judge those people, those fans, because they've got a sign in fucking kanji yeah. already. If it does say, you're not welcome in America, in Kanji. You're like, that is working at a higher level than you'd imagine. <laughs> They're chanting Fujinami. Yeah. At this stage, Ric Flair is actually a bad guy in WCW. Yeah. So this is a doubly difficult main event that's for what, them to do. That's why it's confusing for me, because I was just like, they're trying to sort of explain that the, the, the Tatsumi is the good guy, mm. but we've never seen this guy before. No. So why... why? The hardest thing is, <laughs> they also are trying to say there's been controversy. So it's all like, what's going on? Who is this guy who's made a claim to the title mm. let's get into this now this is going to take some explaining <laughs> uh, before we do let's just have a little bit of fun Tatsumi the Dragon Fujinami he's 38 here wow, does okay. not look no, 38 no. he's a six time IWGP champion uh, the IWGP championship is New Japan's big belt and yes. it's really the most important belt in Japan through most of Japanese wrestling modern history mm. and this was the very first time at this WCW New Japan Super Show that the IWGP champion was taking on the NWA champion in a title versus title match. Now, that didn't fucking happen, right? right? It's, it's a strange one, and it was never explained to the Japanese, and it was never explained to the viewing public. <laughs> the NWA is a collection of different promotions who all did business under the NWA banner. Mm. That is the National Wrestling Alliance. They were an alliance of smaller promotions who came together and shared talent and one world champion who would be able to move around, be booked by various people. And because there was one world champion, you know, they had dates on him and those would be the dates when they could really make money. For years, the, the program that we're watching now, WCW, was known as Jim Crockett. But because it was the biggest show out of everyone in the NWA, it became known as the NWA. In the early 90s, it changes its name to WCW. Mm. And what happened here was there was... <laughs> it's so fucking complex. <laughs> When they went over to Japan, Ric Flair was the NWA champion, but he was also the WCW champion. Right. Right? But there was only one belt, the big gold belt. Right. He goes over, he takes on IWGP <laughs> champion Tatsumi Fujinami. Tatsumi Fujinami pins him and mm. wins the NWA World Championship. Right. That was up for grabs then. Flair comes back and they say, Flair is still WCW champion. And right. they say, right, hang on. So he's still got the same belt. Yeah. And they were like, yes, that's right. So, um, But he's given one of them away. No. He, there is only one belt. He's given oh. away the ghost of one of the belts, which is the NWA title. Now, the Japanese, uh, Tatsumi Fujinami is the NWA champion. The NWA championship, very, very famous and important in wrestling history and well-known in Japan. <laughs> but the WCW title, which is the same belt, yeah. they've said that, no, you didn't that's, win that. That's... What happened is, they said, there was a point in the match where you threw Ric Flair over the top rope. Right. Well, under WCW rules, that's an immediate disqualification if it's done, and that happened. Well, then the pin went on uh, and you pinned him. So what you what you did was you won the NWA belt, but there isn't one. There's only the WSW belt, so we're taking that back with us, and Ric Flair is still champion. Look at what you could have won. Very confusing. 
<laughs> so the Japanese, they were not informed about this right. beforehand. It was just a massive fucking confusing thing in front of 64,000 people. The Japanese papers had actually covered this whole, what the fuck is going on? Oh, and it's fair to say that wrestling is more over in Japan than Hugely. it is in America. The Japanese newspaper covered it saying, this WCW dirty trick finish is nothing but trouble. They've already ruined their company at home with it. Now they're going to ruin our wrestling with it. What this was was a variation on the dusty finish. Yeah. Everyone goes home thinking they've seen a title change. And those everyone included Tatsumi Fujinami. And basically they said, no, the NWA title doesn't really exist anymore. Now, the problem so is... So enjoy it. If you, if you think you've got it, The problem it. is it, the NWA committee said, what's this about the... The, the belt not being the NWA belt? Oh, so... The, what, <laughs> what's the WCW belt? And they go, that's the title. They're going, no, no, it is the NWA belt. What's happening? What is happening? Why is the, that man over there saying he's won our belt? <laughs> and now you've come back and said, no, he hasn't. He's won. This is the WCW belt, but we look at it and it's our belt. What's going on? <laughs> right? This was, this was just a mad disaster. It was essentially a screw job that right. was done to try and give the Japanese what they wanted, but also not win it. Now, yeah. did they think that they wouldn't hear about it or nothing was going to continue? Or, but surely this no. Was, well, what th they this said, was a relationship that was going to continue. So presumably uh, it was the best practice to keep everyone. It's so mad. <laughs> but they basically then, when they did it in America, yeah. they came back to America and said, Flair won by DQ. He's still the champion. Yeah. And in Japan, they said, you can say that he's the champion. Right. <laughs> So when they came back for this rematch, yeah. in Japan, it was a title defence by Tatsumi Fujinami. Yeah. In America, it was presented as Ric Flair is going to sort this out because this guy thinks he's got a legitimate <laughs> claim, but let's get it sorted, right? It's mediation. So depending on what part of the world you're in, it yeah. was presented entirely differently. Now, the whole way through this, the language they use, they've been through it with a fine tooth comb. So it is just constantly saying, they never ever say uh, Flair's regained the NWA Championship, they just constantly say, Flair, walking out of here, the champion. Things like that. It's, right. They never say Tatsumi Fujinami is coming in as the champion. Right. And it's just, so they, they rely on the it. commentators doing a different job. Yes. And presumably the Japanese commentators, if they were doing this, would you just be going, this is the cheating fucking organisation <laughs> uh, who have wasted, I mean, what are they made of Oz? <laughs> you know, <laughs> trying to explain that. I mean, just mental. That kanji's not right. This is part of what <laughs> WCW is like at this time where there's too many people trying to be too fucking clever. Yeah. And, you know, it's sharp business practice. Mm. Interesting situation here regarding the officiating. Bill Alfonso will be the backup official, the alternate official. Tiger Hattori, a great international official, will be the official of record. Yes, he is. The match itself, you know, they go into it. Flair is so good at just taking on anyone from anywhere in the world and their styles working together. I love the fact he comes in and he's got his household staff are waiting <laughs> to see him to the ring. He's got a French maid, yeah. a sommelier. There's a, what I thought was a chef. And then when he comes to the ring, Jim Ross goes, um, that's a cook. Like that. I was like, oh, that's not as good as a chef, is it? No. <laughs> no. Puts that Rolex watch on the uh, sterling silver serving tray. He's got his lady in waiting and his cook and all kinds of folks with him. It's a weird thing where you'll be like Ric Flair's cook and he's like, I want you also to come to the ring with me tonight and just stand there while I go out so that everyone knows I own you. So you'd be a bit like, that, that is not part <laughs> of my job. So, I mean, you know. Got clean up to do. When you have your pay-per-views, I'm still cooking for your family. <laughs> I just don't understand how it's going to work. I'm your fucking role, actually. I know I'm a sommelier. It's amazing I'm a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week sommelier <laughs> anyway, but I don't need to come to an arena to hold a bottle of wine. No. It, that, that's not my job. Wine would be seen as effeminate <laughs> in this wrestling world. How have they managed to make Ric Flair look like 10 years older with just one haircut? Why? <laughs> Why? Doesn't, Why he doesn't, he doesn't he look young? Doesn't he look young? Doesn't he look fresh? He's, he could be in NK who, or TB. Who is that guy with this season's hairdo? <laughs> Whoa. He must be, what, 23, 24? Uh, yeah, this is WCW trying to make Flair look young. Yeah. Cut, yeah they wanted him to have a diamond earring. Right. This is all part of Jim Hurd's idea of, of the Spartacus thing that was suggested where he'd be a Roman gladiator. Yeah. But there are uh, moans to get Flair to be younger looking Flair comes to this and what you slightly get with the impression with Flair is super aware this is going to be watched in Japan right. and so Flair is not going to come and do or a load of old silly shit mm. because he's sort of going actually they respect wrestling over there yeah. the match itself they had in the show that was so confusing
confusing. Mm. Was actually a fairly decent match. Right. They weren't the problem. And you can see there's a slight thing with Flair here, which he is like, why am I putting up with more of this fucking bullshit? I go to the ring, I perform, and then they're all like, there's all this machination behind the scenes. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. This belt is not that belt. And I've got this belt, but no, it's you won something which is not the belt anymore. It's just crazy. When can I go to WWE? <laughs> <laughs> the answer to that is pretty much immediately after this main event. <laughs> so he, he had the ability to be able to have, at the very worst, a serviceable match with anyone from anywhere in the world. Mm. And he takes on Fujinami. Fujinami would have respect for Flair. Fujinami also had, had an American experience. He'd been in WWF in the early 80s right. as a light heavyweight the first WWF junior heavyweight champion and so they'd always had a slight working relationship with him he would end up going into the Hall of Fame in about 2015 mm. and they come together and they they can put together a really sort of watchable match um, Flair when he's working like this when you get the impression that he knows it's going to be seen by a different fan base in Japan he just puts so much more into it mm. you know the, the difference between if you like the, the last time we saw him in a one on one match was Starcade 90 as the Black Scorpion yes. and then you've got this where he's against someone who I mean it, the match suffers because people do not know how to take Tatsumi Fujinami he has no gimmick he's just mm. a Japanese guy Yeah. as the match goes on they begin going he's really good at wrestling and they really start to enjoy it but it does take a while for them to get into it right <laughs> there's so many good things here they do a, a shitty finish again where the Japanese referee is knocked down and in runs Bill Alfonso the WCW ref he would later become a manager in ECW known for managing uh, Sabu and RVD right. and bit, having a really annoying gimmick of a whistle which he just blew oh, fucking fuck constantly that. terrible gimmick and he makes the three count on Fujinami there's a lot of triumphant crowing uh, on the part of Jim Ross and Dusty Rhodes who are delighted to have wiggled their way out of this whole palaver. <laughs> That's as close as you get to the chitlin and grits, says Dusty at one two count. When he wins, you have the lines, Flair's retained the world's heavyweight championship. Make no bones about it. Flair has retained the world's heavyweight title. Make no bones about it. That was a tremendous match. Flair wanted it just a little bit more. Reached down and brought it home. Ric Flair has retained the heavyweight championship. Uh, <laughs> they keep on saying he retained the world heavyweight championship. They are saying he's retained the WCW championship. He has also regained the Ghost NWA championship. Mm. Tatsumi Fujinami can now say, I lost. But they never stopped him being the champion of WCW. Yeah. It was such a mad, weird clusterfuck within wrestling. On television, it probably didn't look that unusual. And it just relied on the fact that no one had seen that pay-per-view. Yeah. You know, that yeah. it all became confusing and strange. They wanted this to basically end whereby after this period of going Ric Flair is American and this is a Japanese guy, so you're naturally going to be on the side of Ric Flair. They wanted to make it clear he was a heel. So they did that ending thinking it would legitimately make people cross and angry and dislike wrestling. And then they'd be like, we now hate Ric Flair. Right. And it never fucking works like that. <laughs> what they hate is they go, we now hate WCW stroke wrestling. Yes. And it's, you know, poor Flair having to be that fall guy <laughs> that makes people go, I don't want to watch wrestling anymore. Yeah. And, and why is that? That's Ric Flair. He, he walks out and he looks like he's got the fucking weight of the world on his shoulders. Mm. He goes out first and Fujinami is left in the ring just going, come back here. Come back, have more. <laughs> like that, nothing. And Flair has just gone off. There is no celebration mm. of a man who is supposedly winning a belt or retaining one. Yeah. It's almost like everyone's just like, can we please just get as get far it. away from this as possible? <laughs> Flair does not last much longer. Um, right. This would be his last major pay-per-view. Mm. He would uh, walk out on the 1st of July, and we're at the 19th of June here, and this is where it gets fucking brilliant. He'd walk out uh, with the big gold belt, mm. <laughs> the NWA oh, Championship, right. okay, yeah, which, nice. of course, at the time was also the WCW Championship. Yeah. He took the belt because he said they refused to pay back a deposit that he'd made of $25,000 plus interest, which for every champion had oh, to put the up belt. As, as, yeah, the belt, yeah. as security. Mm. He signed with the WWE in September 1991, and he was stripped of the NWA championship. Already by that time, they had had the belt on television. And they were beginning to say, Bobby Heenan would say, coming soon, the real world's champion. Mm. And the belt was so recognisable that you knew it was Ric Flair. Holy yeah. shit, they're showing that. Now, WCW had to bring a lawsuit against WWE to prevent them using the belt, Actual belt yeah, on yeah, television. Yeah. Uh, that belt, the NWA belt, was then returned to WCW, and they had made, in that time, a new WCW title belt. So they had the two belts, mm. but there was actually now a WCW title belt. 
Uh, the NWA board, who are still going, <laughs> were saying, right, well, we'll we, our, our belt's back. Let's have a tournament in Japan between WCW <laughs> and New Japan, and we can work out who's the new NWA champion. Yeah. And WCW went, fine, we'll have two world championship belts. We'll have the NWA belt and the WCW belt. Yeah. Possibly something they should have thought of at the start of this. Oh, and great, yeah. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah. So the NWA belt, uh, it was won in a tournament by Masachono in Japan, and it was then defended uh, on in Japan and on WCW TV. And then Ric Flair came back in 1993 and won the NWA belt. <laughs> when he won it, they went, do you know what? We should probably go back to the NWA board and we will recognise the changes made between you and Tatsumi Fujinami. Now the belt's separate. Yeah. We can go back can and go, go back. They in were legitimate yeah, yeah, title yeah, 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 yeah. changes. Fantastic. They then have a falling out over the fact that the WCW want to give the NWA belt to Rick Rude and the NWA <laughs> board go, we don't like this idea at all. So WCW say, okay, we're going to pull out of the NWA. We're not having any more to do with it. Right. We're going to be a business on our own. But they kept the belt, the NWA title belt, because they were like, we own this, don't we? And the NWA board were like, I don't know. Hang on. <laughs> so anyway, they were told they could no longer use the word NWA, but court did rule that they owned the belt. So they put the belt up on television and said, yeah, this now is the, they called it the big gold belt for a while. The big gold belt. <laughs> and it's now the WCW International World Heavyweight Championship, right? Um, that was also competed for the international belt in WCW and Japan by Rick Rude who was the person the NWA did not want to be their <laughs> champion who now had their belt on I mean but it wasn't their belt it was uh, so fucking complex Rick Rude defends it a few times you would love to have those abs against it <laughs> you should be fucking honoured Rick Rude uh, defends it in Japan mm. and again it starts getting really fucking complex it's amazing so this big gold belt which is now the Intercontinental uh, in International fucking the BGB oh, Jesus Christ the big gold belt Rude's got it and they wanted to have a, a match where uh, Rude had used the belt as a weapon to score the pin. Then officials would say... Disrespect. Yeah, and they would uh, award the belt to Sting. Right. And Sting said, no, I don't want to accept it. I have to, I have to win it. Um, in the match where he was supposed to win it, Rick Rude suffered his career-ending back injury, <laughs> right? So they couldn't go on with the match. Right. They couldn't do the, the title change. Yeah. And uh, at Slambury, they said, okay, Rick Rude has been forced to vacate the big gold belt. So we're going to give it to Sting. And Sting said, no, no, I have to win it, in the, to win it in the ring. So then they had a match between him and Vader where Sting won it. Right. So why didn't just fucking accept it? Yeah. Well, they say there's a match. Yeah. He's like, I'm not accepting it. They go, we'll have a match. He goes, now I've won it. Right. <laughs> Same night. Same fucking night. He wins it, and then he... I mean, it's so confusing. The last time it changes hands is at Clash at the Champions 27 in 1994. This was Sting against <laughs> Ric Flair. By this time, Ric Flair is WCW champion, right. and Sting holds the international big gold belt. Mm. And they have a unification match, which Ric Flair wins, and it ends the existence of the international championship. So really confusing, convoluted. Yeah. The Rick Rude thing, I'm sure I even got wrong. I think it went back and forth, <laughs> but it's a nightmare. So what you have is you have these two fictional titles and things. But remember the bit where they went, we're pulling out of the NWA and keeping our belt? Yes. The NWA board went, hang on though, our belt still exists, even if it's not like that belt, that belt yeah. our lineage is still there yeah. and we're still the NWA board so they had a new belt made <laughs> and in 1993 while all this was going on in WCW they held their own tournament to crown a new NWA champion that would be recognised by the NWA Right. and in 1994 that took place it took place in Eastern Championship Wrestling that was the most televised wrestling show that was that part wasn't. of the NWA right okay yeah and that was a tournament it was won by Shane Dunn Douglas, and Shane Douglas was presented with the new NWA title in the ring, which he immediately lifted through and turned his back on. He said he didn't want anything to do with it because he was now the new extreme championship wrestling title holder. And that was the birth of ECW. It was a double cross by Paul Heyman, right. who had, had, had argued very hard for Shane Douglas uh, to win it. Todd Gordon to win it. And they wanted him to win it solely. So, so in front of the world, the they could throw up. it. And that would make them a huge, huge promotion just because of the way that they'd done it. 
it caused so many problems, lawsuits and stuff like that. <laughs> In the end, ECW becomes a huge success. The NWA is even further behind. They have another tournament. An obsession with um, belts. <laughs> I know. It is won by Chris Candido. The NWA title is still active. Right. It's still going today. And it's held by a British guy called Nick Aldis, who is a really good performer. I like Nick Aldis a lot. And it's in the NWA, which, of course, is now the organisation run by William Corgan of the Smashing Pumpkins. Yes, yes. So the NWA belt is still going, but there was a point where it was just like, WCW fucked it so badly. And every time they tried to pull it back together, it Someone all else fucked went it. wrong. Wow. It's properly exciting. So there we are. That is the last time Whew. you'll ever hear on WCW programming uh, any mention, I think, of the NWA. The NWA, right. They have decided now they are WCW. They are independent of mm. uh, this group of promoters. They are on their own because that's the way the WWE became big. And that's what they're going to do. Interesting. Yeah. So I, 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 it's an important historic show. I like mm. it because it's got everything about wrestling in it. Yeah. It's got the bad. It's got the very good. It's got contractual shit, which I've got more and more obsessed with. It's got a lot of wrestlers that is just exciting. It's got Dusty Rhodes, who tries his very best to sell the story of the main event, but doesn't manage to do it in no, any way. Not all, but, but that's also because I think they have been over it so many times. But the thing is, they know so many different versions of it. Yeah. They know the true version <laughs> and then the version they've got to say. And the problem is, if you know both of them, yeah. it's very difficult to get one confused with the other, I mean, isn't don't it? compare Tatsumi Fujinawa to, you know, Julio Iglesias. <laughs> that <laughs> came out of nowhere. <laughs> Has wrestled around the world and when you leave the United States, this man is a household word when you speak of wrestling. Well, you know, a friend of mine, Willie Nelson, told me one time, I said, Willie, why'd you bring old Julio Iglesias over here? He said, my friend, when you leave this continent, we're talking about the greatest singer in the world today, international, and Fujinami is that same type person. Ladies and gentlemen, it- oh, he sort of starts, he just gives up halfway and he goes, I'm going to get in trouble if I keep going. <laughs> I have one fact that you will la la la. Uh, Tatsumi Fujinami appears as a gang member in the 2017 video game Yakuza Kiwami 2. Oh, hello. That's just had a remaster. Yeah, he is, uh, appears in the gang alongside Ricky Chosu, Masahiro Chono, Keiji Muto and Genichiro Tenru. So they're all um, wrestlers they fighting, presumably, uh, Kazuma Kiryu. Yeah, I believe um, one of my favourites, comedy wrestlers, Toru Yano, is also, uh, also in one of the Yakuza uh, Nice. Little bits, yeah. They should, should have let me, when I cosplayed as one of the characters mm. of the Yakuza series, they should have let me do some wrestling <laughs> at Kirken Hall. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. Because it took ages to put those fucking fake Yakuza tattoos on, I'll tell you what. <laughs> they really hurt when you pull them off. Do they? Yeah, they really do. Do they hurt more than real tattoos? Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> they, do. they do, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, one Mark, that was enjoyable. Thank you very much for explaining that absolute shit show of a belt. Respect, dude. I'm fairly that. sure I made some omissions in the Rick Rude bit. Please go oh, and read yourself. Guys, guys educate yourself. Guys, Ed, you educate guys, yourself. Wrestling on. history is the most important history of all. After that, the civil rights movement. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be on fire. Two of starts in the Middlelands with the wall game. July 3rd is that one, fans. For Dusty Rhodes, I'm Jim Ross. So long from St. Petersburg.